everyone welcome back to my channel i'm tracy and if you don't know me i have a passion for upcycling clothing and i teach sewing on here i know i haven't posted in a while but i was so busy moving as you can tell this is a whole new setup and i hired my first employee i just want to give a huge thanks to this week's sponsor see who they sent me this amazing ergonomic chair it's the m18 i have never felt so comfortable in a chair the seat is like so spongy. I'm always so hunched over when I'm like sewing. So it's really nice to have a chair that I can just like sit back, relax for a second while I'm sewing. The office chair has this mesh backing. So it's very breathable. It keeps my back cool while I'm like sewing for long periods of time. The chair also has a headrest, which is really nice. I feel like most office chairs I've ever owned have never had a headrest. So it's kind of nice to just be able to lay my head on it. If any of you guys are interested in purchasing your own Sihu M18 office, chair I have linked it down below for this week's video I made a silk pajama set I made two variations so one with like a regular baby hem and lace at the top versus lace at the top and the bottom and there's matching shorts to go along with it like always I made a digital sewing pattern so that's available on my Etsy shop and I have linked it down below materials needed for this project are ridges lace I have linked some options down below as well usually purchase dead stock lace trim on eBay or fab scrap I also recommend using silk charmeuse for this silk sleep set you're welcome to also use cotton or like any fabric that's in your budget just keep in mind it might lay a slightly different just because silk charmeuse drapes beautifully when it's cut on the bias so let's go ahead and get into this tutorial when you cut out your pattern pieces just make sure you lay paper down first and then place your silk fabric on top of it and make sure everything's squared off on the pattern the straight grain is indicated so just make sure that is parallel to the fabric Pin your pieces in place and I like to use a rotary cutter when I cut out my pattern pieces especially when I'm using silk it cuts like butter. Starting with the cami first after you have cut your front and your back pieces take your fabric and you're going to just do a stay stitch all the way around the cami everything but the hem. The stay stitch will ensure that the fabric doesn't grow so you're just going to do a quarter inch stay stitch all the way around and I like to use a stitch size 5. Also make sure to use a silk needle while you're sewing this. After doing the stay stitch, place wrong sides together. We're going to do a French seam for our side seam finish. So you want to place wrong sides together and pin at the side seams. Sometimes it's easy to just take a ruler and just kind of like mark where that half inch seam allowance hits so you know where to like overlap your front and back pieces. So pin the side seams together, wrong sides. This is very important. Take it to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch all the way down and don't forget to back tack. For any project after you stitch anything, it's really important to just take your iron to it. So just press that seam allowance. To create that French seam clean finish on the inside, you want to just trim an eighth of an inch away from that quarter inch that we just stitched. And flip the garment so right sides are together and you're kind of just going to use your fingers to kind of maneuver the fabric and like roll and like push it up so you get as close as possible to the previous stitch. And you can see this is like encasing that seam allowance. So you're just gonna pin it all the way on the side seams, pin that in place. Now, when you take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance, that little like leftover seam allowance um, is going to be encased in that stitch so that's what you get when you do a French seam it's a really nice finish for silk after creating that beautiful French seam you're going to just take it to the iron and just give it a good press it creates such a nice finish on the outside and the inside it does take longer than regular seams, but it is worth it in the end. Now for the lace part of this cami, you're going to just take your pattern and on the pattern you want to just like lay out your lace. And because lace is like straight and it doesn't 
curve or anything um, you're going to just place it along the neckline towards the center front and just kind of lay it there you're going to end up overlapping another piece to create a hidden join so you can get that like deep v shape at the neckline so you're going to take your water soluble marker and just mark the center front so you know where to overlap that like lace motif pin it in place And just repeat this to the hem so you can choose to do lace at your hem of your cami or you can also just do a baby hem and there's like so many tutorials on that i've done like a small tutorial on like my previous videos but you can just hem it and um, i'm choosing to do lace on this version just so you guys can see what it looks like it's a nice little touch um, so you're just gonna follow your hemline. I'm just kind of removing that seam allowance because I don't need it um, I didn't want my tank to be that long on the pattern. Just remove a half inch Just place that and I know it's not a perfectly straight line So um, sometimes the lace will give a little bit so you can kind of curve it So just follow the pattern and just mark the side seam leave a little excess So you have enough to like overlap it on the back piece lace if that makes sense um so just mark that in place so you know what's what and also make sure you know what the front is from the back because they are slightly different pin and overlap your lace motif When you get to the sewing machine you're gonna set it to a zigzag stitch and you're just gonna go in and out of like the lace motif that lays on top of the lace if that makes sense so just stitch wherever it feels most natural and don't forget to back tack and also do the zigzag stitch at the neckline lace to get that V shape so after you've done that I just take my small scissors and I just like remove any excess lace that doesn't like need to be there so just try to cut as close as you can to your stitch so it's like really flawless and it looks like one piece of lace after doing that flawless hidden join you can just place your neckline lace on top of your cami and make sure the scallop lines up with the neckline and just pin it in place i repeat the same steps to the lace at the hem so i just match up the side seams and just pin it along the hemline of the cami. I definitely recommend basting your lace in place. It makes it a lot easier when you're appliquing the lace and don't have to keep removing pins. Take it to your sewing machine and make sure you're using a zigzag stitch. Don't forget to back tack. So you're just kind of doing this pivoting motion and following the lace motif as close as possible to the lace edge. So you're just picking up your presser foot turning it's a very tedious part of appliquing lace but this gives you the best look of lace when it's actually finished versus i don't know if you've seen garments but they tend to just do a straight stitch like all the way down and like you just have little like loose pieces of lace on each side because obviously lace isn't completely straight it has like that curvature going on of the floral motifs it's best to match your bobbin thread to your fabric and your top thread to your lace if you're using two different colors it gives you such a nice finish when you're done so you have like the blue matching your fabric and then you have your beige matching your lace it just looks more professional that way you can take your pinking shears and just trim all that excess fabric behind the lace so just make sure to leave about a half inch seam allowance as you cut you want to use pinking shears for this because it cuts your fabric on the bias so your fabric doesn't fray and just repeat this step to your hem i have included all of the links to all of my sewing supplies down below To clean finish the armhole and the back neckline, I like to do a baby hem. So it's just like a double fold. So you're folding a quarter inch and then folding a quarter inch again. 
and I don't like putting pins on this I think it's so much easier for me to just like fold a quarter inch and then just take it to the sewing machine and just stitch right on top of that so like really close to the edge and I just do that all the way around first just to secure it and then I take it to the iron just steam that out and then I take it back to the sewing machine and fold another quarter inch and that's how I do my baby hem and for these straps I'm making spaghetti so I like to cut my spaghetti on the straight grain just cut a two inch strip then I fold it in half right sides together and take it to the sewing machine and just sew a quarter inch I've made so many tutorials on how to make adjustable straps so I will just link them in the description if you need a refresher on that I make my straps 18 inches long and then my little tab for the ring that is about two inches to find your strap placement, just fold the back of the cami in half and you can find your center. And from the center point, just mark three inches on either side and that is your strap placement. I just take my adjustable straps and place them onto the back and I make sure um, the silk is so like finicky and you don't wanna like stitch these straps directly onto the silk itself, you wanna stitch it to the neckline hem stitch and just go back and forth to really tack them down. When placing your straps at the front at the strap point, you're gonna just take your strap and kind of like angle it at a 45 degree angle and just tuck it underneath that seam allowance that we pinked just so the end of the strap is hidden. And you're going to just take it to the sewing machine and at the front strap you're going to just do a zigzag stitch to secure it in place. And this is the other version of the cami without the lace at the hemline. So you can see the baby hem looks really nice on this tank as well. I already sewed in my tags at the center back and I love this like dark gray with the pink combination and you can see the lace is really nice on the first version so you can have a lot of fun with like different colors and just doing different kinds of laces and trims you can also just opt out of doing a lace at the neckline and just like clean finish it with the lining if you desire even adding like cute little bows at the center front or the strap points would be really cute just to spice it up time for the short so you're going to just make sure you mark which one's the back and which one's the front just so you don't get confused because the short patterns are slightly similar the difference is that the front short is slightly curved at the crotch seam i don't know if you'll notice that but it slightly like curves out because you kind of have that little like belly that the short needs to like sit comfortably on before we can start sewing it together just make sure you go ahead and take it to your sewing machine and do a stay stitch all the way around everywhere except the hemline after stay stitching you're going to place wrong sides together and start pitting at the side seam of the short so you're placing the front on top of the back with wrong sides facing each other and just pin that in place you're going to do a french seam so just repeat the steps we did earlier on the cami for the side seam of the shorts. So a quarter inch seam allowance and don't forget to back tack. Iron that seam and now you can just trim an eighth of an inch off that seam allowance. Now place right sides together and just pin. Just take it to the sewing machine and sew another quarter inch and you created a French seam on your shorts. So just for all of the seams on the shorts, I'm doing French seams just because it is the best finish for a silk sleep set. Give it a good press and the French seam is sewn at the side seam of the shorts. I'm going to repeat this exact same step to the inseam of the shorts. So you're just going to repeat everything I just did, placing wrong sides together. sewing a quarter inch, 
trimming and then sewing that front seam. After sewing the inseam front seam, you're going to place both short legs and kind of just place the front wrong side together. And then you're gonna take the back and place wrong sides together at the center back. And then you're gonna grab the inseam and place wrong sides together. And by doing this, you're connecting the whole crotch seam from front to back. So just pin that all the way around and you'll see that one leg can go inside the other and now you just have the U shape to follow and it's a lot easier to try to sew that through. So just pin that all the way and sew a quarter inch. And just repeat all of the French seam steps for the crotch seam. Now you have a crotch seam that is finished with the French seam and it looks quite beautiful and the inseam lines up perfectly. So now um, you can take a piece of chalk and your ruler and just mark your grommet placement. On the pattern I indicate where to place it. Because I'm inserting grommets into this like really thin silk charmeuse, it needs to be backed with like two layers of cotton. So just take like two little squares of cotton fabric and just place it behind that chalk line and I'm just basting it around that area where I'm going to place the grommet. So just hand baste it in place and also baste the other side just so the grommet has something to actually grab onto and doesn't just completely fall out. This is my grommet press. It's from camsnaps.com. I have linked it down below. I love it because it allows me to hole punch a hole into my fabric before I place the grommet which makes my life easier and I don't have to like cut a hole into my fabric and like mess it up. I use a quarter inch grommets for this and I also got these really cute little like glass jars with cork tops to organize all of my hardware and I really love keeping all of my hardware in these glass containers versus like little plastic bags I had. I have also linked those little containers down below and they're also great for storing beads. After inserting the grommets, I remove that basting stitch and I turn it towards the inside. I grab my little scissors and just trim all that excess fabric because we don't need it. It was just so the grommet could hold on to something so you can just leave a slight bit of excess around the grommet itself but not too much. You should definitely use matching fabric for this part. We had white cotton available so that's what I used. Now we can move on to the waistband. So you're going to just fold under a quarter inch, take it to your sewing machine and stitch all the way around the waist. And after stitching a quarter inch under, you're going to fold under one more time and conceal the back of the grommet. So you're just folding 5 eighths of an inch under and placing pins all the way around. The center back, I insert my care label. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance all the way around. But when you get to the center back, leave about a two inch opening just so you can insert your elastic. And also match your elastic to your fabric. I'm just using white because that's all I had. And cut your elastic to your waist measurement, but add an inch to that because the shorts sit a little bit below your waist. So it's like mid rise. 
with a safety pin pinned to one end of the elastic to start pushing and pulling through that channel we just created at the waist and just go all the way around until you reach the other side. Take your elastic and overlap an inch. Take it to the sewing machine and just do a zigzag stitch to secure the elastic in place. Elastic back into the waist. You can just close up that two inch opening we left at the back. And with a straight stitch, I like to go back into the waistband and at the very top stitch about an eighth of an inch away to kind of give it more of a like fun gathered effect at the top of the waistband. So with a straight stitch, you're gonna like hold and pull everything. So you wanna stretch that elastic out with the fabric and just do a straight stitch. And you'll see when it gets gathered, it creates a really cute stitching effect. When you reach the grommet, just back tack right before it because you can't stitch through that. So that's what it looks like. And I love how this little detail looks on these shorts. For the hem of these shorts, I decided to do lace applique. So I'm pinning my pattern pieces and lining them up at the bottom of the hem at the side seams. And then I just take my lace and just lay it out and see where it needs to lay. And then I just mark the inseam. And then I do the hidden join. Make sure to leave some excess and overlap those inseams and make sure you mark the front versus the back of that lace and just take it to your sewing machine and sew a zigzag stitch to create that hidden join. Trim that excess off. Take your lace and just line it up at the side seam and the inseam and just pin it alongside the hem. So just match up the scallop edge to the edge of the hemline on these shorts. And feel free to opt out of using lace trim. You can just do a baby hem if you prefer. I take a needle and thread and just hand baste that lace into place. Especially for the leg openings, it's really hard to remove pins as you sew because it's like a circle. So um, I recommend just hand basting this part in place. It'll make your life so much easier, especially around the crotch area as well. My bobbin thread is black and my top thread is pink, so it sews everything perfectly and it's color matched. So you're just doing the same motion as we did with the cami where you're just lifting up your presser foot, stitching with a zigzag stitch, lifting it up, pivoting as you follow the motifs of the lace. And the sewing foot that I'm using for this applique is actually called an applique foot. So it's clear and it lets you see where you're stitching, which makes appliqueing so much easier with this presser foot. I have linked one down below. I take the pinking shears and just trim off the excess fabric, leaving a half inch seam allowance from that stitch. And I made some spaghetti that's about 60 inches long just so it's enough to feed through the waistband and also have like a cute little bow at the front. So I just take a safety pin and pin it to one end. Um, since this is a really small safety pin and I don't want it to open while I'm like feeding it through the waist channel, I just tape it into place so like nothing shifts and this really helps it not open because I've definitely had that happen and I've had to like cut into the garment and it was just super annoying because the safety pin opened. So I'm taking the safety pin and just like feeding it through one grommet and then just doing the push and pull method and just doing it all the way until I reach the other side. To finish off the drawstring ends, I just do a double fold. I take a needle and thread. I just do a hand tack stitch to sew that in place. And you also can opt out of doing the grommets and the drawstring at the front of these shorts. So with just the elastic at the waistband, that's perfectly fine. And now you have your own silk pajamas.
hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you guys do make your own silk pajama set please tag me on instagram i would love to see what you guys come up with like the different color combinations and laces and trims you decide to use please don't forget to like comment and subscribe it really is the best way to support your favorite creators for free i will be posting an apartment tour video probably sometime in the next few weeks just because we're still kind of busy like organizing and just doing all like the decorative touches in the apartment stay tuned for that video thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you next time